Cordover Street. <laughs> How's it going? I'm good. How are you? Great. So I'm very excited because I know that you have some new music coming out. You have a song called Summertime. And I am just hearing that this is going to be the perfect summer pop. Tell me more about what this vibe is like. Um, well, I wrote the song uh, in the fall, like right after summer was over. And I was already bummed about it being over. Uh, and then the next time summer was coming around, we were all kind of trapped uh, at home. So um, it's kind of perfect because I feel like everybody's just wanting to get out of their house and go to the beach and uh, kind of do the normal summertime activities. So hopefully this thing kind of wraps up <coughs> fairly soon. <laughs> yeah, so we can get kind of a little escapism in this song, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Actually at the beach and not in our houses. <laughs> yeah, I would love to go to the beach right now. <laughs> now, I'm curious, do you have a favorite line from this song? Um, favorite line? Uh, uh, yeah, there's one, there's, there's, there's one line that's just, it's just taught, it's just an interesting way of kind of saying you've been waiting, but, uh, got me running circles on my wristwatch. Or there's this one that's, there's a lyric in there that's, um, uh, it's, uh, there's, it's, um, I'm trying to think of all these lyrics now. Um, you got me running circles on my wristwatch, and then it goes right into the chorus. But uh, there's one uh, lyric that um, says, you got tequila by the handle in my boardwalk, dream of two-piece kicking off her high tops. My nose is close enough to smell the sunscreen, burning toast and running on the concrete. And it goes, uh, there's a bunch of just fun, fun little lines in there. I love that. That's very good summer imagery, too. I feel like we're all- Yeah, I just wanted to have a bunch of visuals and kind of just something that everybody could just pull the windows down and drive to. Yeah. So when you're working on a song like this, do you have an image in your head of like what you want the song to evoke when you're talking about summertime? Um, well, I started off with the idea of um, just the title. And, and I went into the session with one of my buddies who I was working with and he was like, all right, well, what do you want to do with it? And I was like, well, I just gonna kind of want to paint a visual of this I kept uh, I kept seeing this kind of like 80s, 90s throwback, just uh, people rollerblading on Venice Boardwalk, you know, taking taking some margaritas to the beach, putting it on sunscreen, uh, just basically getting too much sun. Okay, so you have this amazing visualizer video of just rollerblading, all of these great summer visuals, even I caught Brad Pitt in there. <laughs> How did that come together? <laughs> Can't have a good video without Brad Pitt. That was a, actually a Pringles, old Pringles commercial, I think. Um, <laughs> no, but nobody can really leave the house or shoot any kind of music videos or do any content. So I was just kind of piling together a bunch of like old uh, aerobics workout videos, 80s, 90s of rollerblading, stuff that you would have seen in like just old like throwback stuff. I mean, I just think that stuff's so hilarious. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's about all you can do with being sh shut in at home, so. I also wanted to bring up, just speaking of your music, um, I think congratulations are in order because Hold On just got certified platinum. Thank you very much. Yes, <laughs> I'm super, uh, super excited about that. That's um, Really cool. So hopefully I'll uh, I'll get my plaque up here and be able to put it on the wall in the studio uh, in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> what does it feel like that this song has lasted? Because it came out about three years ago, and it's it's still resonating with people today. Um, it's it's kind of it's crazy because we put the song out in 2017. Uh, the label I was with, and you know, publishing company, and like everybody that was kind of working at you know the powers that be in the music said the song was like too, it was too slow. It's too kind of uh, too, you know, dramatic and ballady. And I was, it was just kind of what I was going through at the time when I wrote it. And uh, I think it just kind of goes to show you that you can, as long as you're genuine and honest and uh, if, 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 if you connect with whatever it is, somebody else might connect with it. And power that music can actually, you know, help people, you know, get through hard times or, um, the thing with music is nobody really relates to the exact story 
but they relate to the emotion behind it. So I think that that was cool that, that uh, you know, three years later, the songs, people are still responding to the song and, um, you know, are just listening as much as they are. Do you get a lot of messages from fans talking about how they connect with it? Because I know if I scroll through the YouTube comments on any of your videos, it's just people pouring their hearts out. Um, do you, are you on the receiving end of that too? Yeah, yeah. I've gotten a lot of, um, I've gotten a lot of messages from fans and people that have listened to the song um, that have been going through a lot of uh, difficult times and, uh, you know, a lot of really personal messages. but. Um, being able to help anybody uh, that, you know, needs something to reach out to or something to um, relate to when they're going through something like that, like anything serious is, uh, is pretty much all you can ask for about creating any kind of music, being able to help, being able to help people. So. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting that you kind of bring up helping people because one way that I feel like you're helping people right now is with these quarantine sessions that you're doing. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely, I wasted a couple hours just scrolling through your YouTube. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of going a little bit nuts because I'm like, I don't, I'm running out of recipes. I'm running out of uh, stuff to do. So I'm going to try to keep it entertaining. I definitely, um, uh, since I can't really go to the pool or the beach, I ordered a <laughs> A, a big kiddie pool that I'm going to blow up and put on my porch and just enjoy the pool that way. So it's, it's supposed to get here on Saturday. So, <laughs> so have you planned what the perfect song is going to be to cover while you're in this kiddie pool? Uh, probably Margaritaville. <laughs> I got That's a little like watermelon umbrella I'm going to put over it so I don't burn because I'm, I'm pretty pale as you can see. Um, Gonna you know, get my blender out and just start making some cocktails and chilling by the pool. Yeah. <laughs> so other than making these awesome videos on your quarantine sessions, how have you been keeping busy during quarantine? What are you doing to bust this boredom? <laughs> um, I mean, luckily I have my studio here at home, um, so I can still write and uh, record and do music. Um, a lot of cooking, a lot of, a lot of. Uh, reading and video games and uh kind of going for walks outside i mean there's really nothing a lot of facetime and zoom games with friends and uh family like my family i had my family my family all got on uh which i have a big family i have four sisters and one brother and then my parents so we all got on zoom uh this last week and played this game called quiplash which it's kind of like cards against humanity but everybody can play from their phone and then the answers go on the screen so uh, that's, that's a really fun one. And then like just FaceTime, weirdly FaceTime dinners with friends. Well, before I let you go, I do have to ask you about this magnificent guitar collection behind you. Okay. So how did you start collecting so many different guitars? Um, so this one right here, uh, my parents got for me when, on my 17th birthday. This one right here, um, I got for an ex-girlfriend that never learned how to play guitar. <laughs> and then uh, we had a, we had a uh, breakup and she left it at my house. I just figured, you know what, keep it. Uh, and then this one was a gift by my buddy who owns this guitar company. Um, uh, it's a Bedell guitar. This one um, was given to me. That one, this one that I've had for probably 10, 10 or so years. And then that one I stole from uh, Glee. <laughs> so, I love so, that. Is that the only souvenir that you took from the set or were there any others? Um, see, like the foam padding in here and the below the guitars. Is was that all the fire? foam? It was all the foam <laughs> from the fire room, yeah. <laughs> and then I, I randomly took a, uh, a golden basketball trophy that we had in the... Uh, in the like one of the cases on, on the side of the, the hallways <laughs> but i didn't really take i didn't take much other than that and uh just that and some foam i guess <laughs> <laughs>